It doesn't matter whether you're a professional tradesperson or you just do a spot of weekend DIY. It's really important that you understand the fundamental differences between these three different types of drills. And in this video, I'm gonna explain all of that. Hiya folks, welcome back. You can see here, I've got three different types of drills. One of them is technically not a drill, but I want to explain once and for all what the fundamental difference is between each of these, because each one has its job, and depending on the sort of job you're doing, you're probably gonna need all three of these. We have got here, I've got an impact driver, a standard combi drill, and my old faithful SDS drill. Before I go into how these are fundamentally different from each other, let me explain what each one of these is for. So, we have got here combi drill, impact driver, and an SDS drill. I happen to be using Makita. You use whatever brand you want. It makes no difference. Pick your favorite color. The combi drill is the most versatile workhorse of the lot. It's such a handy drill to have. I would say if you're gonna have nothing else, if, you, if you're not gonna bother with the impact and the SDS, get a decent combi drill because this will work for most things. It'll do most jobs fairly well. It'll do screwdrivering, but it'll not do screwdrivering as well as an impact driver. You can drill into concrete and brick if you want, but it'll take you a long time compared to an SDS. I'll come back to that. But for things like drilling into wood with like wood bits or HSS bits or whatever you're gonna be using, drilling metal, drilling into relatively soft block work. You can drill into concrete blocks. It's just, it's much easier with an SDS. But drilling into block work, uh, wood, metal, that sort of thing, your combi drill is your friend works in a very, very simple way. You've got a forward and reverse function on it. Normally you've got gears. This has got um, a low speed and a high speed. And we've got on this the option of switching the hammer action on and off. And we've got a torque setting as well. I'll come back to all of that. So then the SDS drill, you can't use it as a screwdriver, but what it is very good at is drilling into hard things. So drilling into things like bricks, concrete blocks, concrete walls, anything hard. If you've got a house with brick walls, forget about the combi drill. Get yourself an SDS drill. I've seen people battling on with combi drills, trying to drill holes into brick walls and they're wondering why it's taking like half an hour per hole. It's because you need an SDS drill. It's a completely different technology. It works in a totally different way that I'll tell you about in a minute. And then finally, the impact driver. The impact driver for me has completely taken over from the combi drill for electric screwdriver type work. So this can work as an electric screwdriver for anything from relatively small screws right up to massive bolts and things like that. You can use it with a screwdriver bit in the end or you can use an adapter and you can use it with like normal sockets and things like that. You can also get sockets that have a hex bit on the end and then you can obviously pop the hex bit in the end of your drill holder or whatever. You don't have to use a holder bit like this, by the way. I use the, um, the Weira wrap adapter, but you don't have to use one of those. It just makes life a bit easier, but you can put the bit straight into the end like that. You do need a bit holder of some description for screwdriver bits because otherwise they tend to kind of get a little bit lost in the, in the end like that. You've barely got any of the bit pointing out the end of the hole. So you do need a, a bit holder of some description. Now I can't get that back out. For screwdriver bits, as I say, I like the, the Weira wrap adapter. It does a really good job. So just to recap, combi drill, great for wood, soft block work, metal. You can use it for screwdrivering, but I prefer the impact driver generally for electric screwdriver work because it's much, much easier. And then the SDS drill, brilliant for hard things like bricks, concrete. You can't use it as a screwdriver, 
What you can do is you can use it as a chisel because you get a thing known as rotary lock on it where you can stop it from rotating and then it works in a similar way to a pneumatic drill. Very, very versatile tool to have. The key thing with all of these is the technology in them to make them work is totally different and you need to understand why a combi drill does not work in the same way as an SDS drill and that's why an SDS drill is much better for going into things like brick and block. So the combi drill, it works in a really simple way. Normally you've just got like a keyless chuck on it and you can just change the bit for whatever bit that you want. I've got a masonry bit on this at the minute, but you can obviously put a, an HSS or wood bits onto it, however you want. And then you've just got really simple forward and reverse function on the drill. Obviously you can take the drill out and swap it for a, a bit holder so that you can use it as a screwdriver. Absolutely fine if you've got bigger holes to drill like Forstner bits and things like that. Then you can do these sort of holes with a combi drill. And as I say if you want to drill metal or Block work, you know, soft block work like that. A drill, you shouldn't really use a metal bit for block work, but these are so soft you can almost poke the drill into it without even switching it on. If you are going to be drilling into block work, use a masonry bit because that's what they're designed for. But going into wood, combi drill is your friend. And of course, if I just switch this over to the masonry bit, You have got a hammer action on it, but really it should be called a vibrate action. There's no hammer involved in the hammer action on a combi drill. It effectively has like a set of cogs that vibrate over ball bearings or whatever. There's various different technologies. That's with the hammer action switched on. That's it switched off. But it doesn't hammer the bit, it just vibrates the bit into the, uh, into the thing that, that you're drilling. You generally, you're not gonna use the hammer action with wood and metal, it's only really if you're going into masonry that you would have the hammer action switched on. And as I say, you've got the torque setting as well, where you put it into screwdriver mode, and then you can adjust the torque, and the torque setting will automatically stop the drill, theoretically, when the screw's tight. It doesn't always work like that. But the key thing to remember with a combi drill, even though it might get called a hammer drill, there's no hammering involved. It's vibrating its way into the material. Now with the SDS drill, on the other hand, there is absolutely a hammer involved. The way this works, and you'll hear it when you try and use it, obviously you don't use an SDS drill into wood, but there is physically a hammer inside the body of the drill and it is doing the equivalent of hammering the end of the drill bit. A combi drill doesn't do that. So when you're drilling into concrete, I'll take this bit out, it's the equivalent of having the drill rotating while hammering the end of the bit. That's the difference of what an SDS drill does. And that's why an SDS drill is so much better for going into hard materials than a combi drill because the SDS bit is physically getting hammered and the combi drill doesn't do that. And you don't need to just use an SDS drill for like quite big holes. You can get quite delicate bits such as this is a little five and a half mil bit here. So even if you're just putting little red roll plugs in or whatever, then an SDS drill is still fantastic if you've been trying to put up pictures or mirrors and things like that onto a brick wall and you're wondering why you just can't for the life of you especially in older houses that can have very very hard bricks and you just can't get a hole drilled in the wall buy yourself an SDS drill and you will wonder why you never did it sooner and what I was saying before you can put it in the rotation lock mode and then you can switch out the bit for like a chisel bit and you can use it as kind of like a pneumatic drill and you can even swap it out for great big bits like like this sort of thing if you've got to drill a hole 
all the way through a wall and back out the other side. This is a 750mm uh, long bit that I've got here, but you can drill huge holes all the way through brick and concrete walls. Awesome piece of kit, the SDS drill. As I say, invest in a decent one and it'll last you a lifetime. The only slight disadvantage with an SDS is that you do need to grease your drill bits and the chuck and that grease tends to get everywhere. So don't put an SDS drill down on a carpet. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience on that one. And then finally, my little friend here, the little impact driver. I should really have charged these batteries up before showing you this. Oh, really? Fantastic. Completely flat. And then finally, our little friend here, the impact driver. And it gets called a driver. You can use it as a drill. You can get drill bits that have a hex bit on the end because impact drivers generally only have a hex collet on them. They're not really designed to be used as drills. They're predominantly designed to be either screwdrivers or, or bolt drivers. You can tell it's an impact driver if you hear this sort of sound, listen. I'll explain why it does that in a minute. If we compare it to um, if we compare it to a combi drill, and as I say, you can use a combi drill for screwdrivering. But what tends to happen with a combi driver is you get a thing known as cam out, where the screwdriver bit jumps out of the head. You don't tend to get that with an impact driver, and I'll tell you why. So an impact driver, that noise that it makes, so look at this, great big screw here that I'll put into this bit of wood. That noise that it's making there is because what it does, it hammers the screw in in a rotational way. So it's getting hammered, it's the equivalent of having like a socket on a nut and then hammering it around like that. But it has a hidden little trick up its sleeve that a lot of people don't know about. Every time it does a hammer like that, it also, at the same time, does a hammer like that. Kind of imagine the SDS drill where it's hammering in that direction, but it's also doing a rotational hammer at the same time. And because of that, you don't get any cam out because every time it's hammering it around, it's also hammering it down. So, and that stops the bit from jumping out of the screw head. And it's a really fundamental thing about how impact drivers work. And it's why they are much better than combi drills. If you're doing a lot of screwing of things like self-tapping screws into wood, even big screws into concrete, into wall plugs in concrete and stuff like that. The impact driver makes really light work of it. And because of the way it works, it also puts much, much less strain on your wrist. So even if you don't have particularly strong arms, an impact driver can put an enormous amount of force. See, I'm barely holding that drill there. And it's happily driving that huge screw into that piece of wood. And because of that, it's also very good at things like putting massive coach screws into wood. As I say, you can use it either with a screwdriver bit on the end or with socket bits on the end, and you can use it for bolts and screws, no problem at all. Fantastic piece of kit. My preference is to have all three of these because your average house, especially in the UK, you're probably gonna have brick walls, you're gonna have a certain amount of wood. You're always gonna need an electric screwdriver of some description. So for your brick walls, it's the SDS drill. For your hollow walls and block walls, it's the combi drill. And for all your general purpose screwdrivering, it's the impact driver. One thing with the impact driver is that you don't have the same level of finesse as you do with the combi drill because of the way the bit is getting hammered around and down into the substrate. So you don't have quite the same level of finesse. But I find, you know, the more that you get used to your impact driver, if I wanted to screw this screw into this piece of wood and for it to stop 
at exactly head level. You can do that. You can be quite delicate with the trigger and on newer impact drivers, you can set torque settings and there's gear ratios and things like that as well. So yeah, you're not gonna be using it for tiny little screws into antique furniture. But I mean, here we've got four by 45 screws straight into pine and I can get it so that the head's perfectly flush. In terms of batteries, I quite like the little 1.5 amper hour battery that came with my impact driver. It's nice and lightweight and if you've got your hand up in cupboards and you know, in awkward places and you're doing a lot of like screwdrivering, it's nice that you're not getting a really tired arm. But you can obviously put a bigger battery on such as the four amper hour battery here. Bit of a bigger beast. It does make it much heavier and it's not as well balanced as it was with the 1.5 one. But if you're doing a lot of things like, you know, fencing and things like that, where you're gonna need the extra battery power, then fine. And you can still get that level of finesse that we talked about before, where you can, as long as you're not using tiny, tiny screws, if I want to get this screw all the way perfectly flush, there we go. What you can also do, and I do this sometimes if I want to be really careful that I don't over tighten a screw, is just stop slightly short with the impact driver and then just use a manual screwdriver just to do your final little tighten. And it'll also give you a really good idea of how tight that is because the impact driver will get the screw unbelievably tight. It'll get it tighter than you can physically get it with a hand screwdriver. So you do have to be careful. I have mentioned it before on this channel. If you don't stop with an impact driver, you can drive that screw all the way through and all the way out the other side of the piece of wood if you're not careful. It's a fantastic bit of kit. And as I say, if you're vaguely serious about doing property maintenance, DIY, trades work of any description, you should have all three of these. So there you go, folks. I hope you found that useful. I'll include a couple of links in the description to different combi drills and impact drivers and SDS drills that I would buy. I'll include a link to the video that I made about my trusty old Makita HR2450 SDS drill. If you can pick one of these up secondhand, that's in good condition. I mean, I've had this for years and years and it's lasted so well. It's an investment worth making because a good SDS drill will last you a lifetime. With that all said and done, folks, this is probably my last video before Christmas. So I wish you an amazing Christmas, an amazing new year as well, if I don't speak to you all before then. Thank you as always for your amazing support on this channel, especially everyone who supports on Patreon as well. It's massively appreciated. It helps me make more independent videos like this and I have so much planned for 2020. I can't wait to share it all with you. I hope you managed to get some time off over the festive period. Oh, by the way, let us know in the comments below what your favorite combi, SDS and impact drivers are. Always interesting to know actual comments from real people about how these perform in the real world. As usual, take care folks, and I shall see you next time. Tatty bye.